Sing the symphony My heart beats when it could not sing a P One G, play some keys to sing for me I get hooked to the chorus guaranteed uh, I'm a tempo tempo Music takes you to the place it came from Instrumentals in your mental echoes In your subconscious it sits and set those Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Welcome to Bible Talks. Fridays are for Bible Talks. As you know, it's always a privilege to be here uh, sharing with you what I have to what I have to share from the Bible. Uh, arguably my favorite segment of the show. I hope you have been enjoying the Bible Talks segment so far. We have done a lot of a lot of subjects so far uh, from our very first episode coming up to here has been uh, quite a journey. And seeing your engagement in this in this content is always encouraging. By the way, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share. Uh, we are so grateful to every new subscriber and every person that's coming on board the channel. Uh, depending on which segment of the show you like the most, uh, we will come you either way. Uh, for some, they like Bible talks. For some, they like the Monday show. Uh, my personal favorite, if I was a viewer, would be. Bible talks because I, I really love to get into the word of God and the Bible. Um, that's, that's something that's just, uh, for me, you know, and, 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 and <laughs> whatever is happening. And I'm glad to have you here. Uh, it's always a privilege. It's always a joy to share the word of God with you, with, uh, people that are wanting to learn about God and fellow believers, uh, alike. It's, it's, it's a privilege to share the word of God with you. You must have seen just what went into the preparation of this show. Somehow everything was just working against me coming to you today. Uh, but I'm here. Either way, I'm here. I hope you're uh, Look at that. geared up and ready for what I have to discuss today. It will be a short one in case this episode suddenly cuts then this is a testament to you that we are living in Zambia. We just concluded the Gifts of the Spirit series discussing uh, the gifts that every believer is entitled to once they, uh, or rather the gifts that every believer is uh, exposed to once they come into the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit distributes to each believer as he wills, uh, depending on his decision, his uh, analysis, how he decides to distribute these gifts. This is purely the work of the Holy Spirit. But we also do know that gifts can be transferred 
transferred through impartations, through the laying on of hands. Uh, Paul says in the book of Romans, I wish to come to you that I may impart unto you spiritual gifts. So we know that not only does the Holy Spirit himself distribute gifts to believers, but that the Holy Spirit also, after having distributed gifts to believers, can then allow for these gifts to be transferred from one believer to another through a process that is known as impartation. If you are in the Pentecostal circles, then this is not a strange thing for you, impartation. It's a very scriptural thing. It's a very biblical thing. Uh, today, we're not really focusing on doctrinal issues. And I'm here to encourage you, regardless of where you may be watching me from, what church you may be coming from, whether you have reasons to have reservations uh, on the basis of some difference that we may have. I would encourage you this, uh, that I'm presenting to you today is meant for every single person, not just believers and believers alike. This information is something that I hope is going to raise questions in your heart. I'll take just a few minutes to raise a couple of questions to get you thinking a certain way, especially due to the times that we're in. As I told you earlier, in Zambia, we're already in the tribulation. Uh, it's crazy. So yeah, there are a couple of things that, that I'll share with you today on the basis of one scripture that I hope will inspire you to, to think in a certain direction, to begin to consider life a certain way. You know, many times people fail to relate to the gospel because they believe that the gospel is for spirits. Uh, when in fact the gospel is meant for human beings, uh, those of us living on the earth, many times we've seen in the, in the Bible where angels failed uh, to preach the gospel but had to direct men to other men in order to hear words. Remember how an angel appeared to Cornelius in the book of Acts and said, go to Peter, who is called Simon, and he will tell you words by which you and your family can be saved. And interesting enough, Paul in the, in the book of Corinthians says, I know of a man who was taken up, caught up, snatched up, ruptured into the third heaven, uh, into paradise, and he heard inexplicable words that are not lawful for a man to utter here. And I, I like to imagine that if an angel in, in their world was describing how that he was caught up into the earth and he heard Peter preach, he probably would tell his fellow angels, I heard words that are not permitted to be uttered here. And many times we take these things for strange mysteries. What words could Paul have heard where he went? What we fail to distinguish and establish is the legitimate presence of other worlds, the legitimate structures that have been set up to separate these worlds. For example, in the book of Luke, Jesus talks about a chasm that divided the rich man from Lazarus who was in Abraham's bosom. So Abraham's bosom was in a place he could see while he was in hell. Yet there was a chasm, a divide, that those who are here cannot go there, and those who are there cannot come here. That's how it was explained. And this is how the worlds are arranged, that certain interactions are limited, that the words that are spoken here may not be spoken here, and the words that are spoken here may not be spoken here, right? So then when angels come into our world, they cannot come with the message of the gospel. That has to be done by our fellow men. And... Once we begin to understand this, then we know really that this gospel is meant for men. It's not meant for spirits. And so every human being must be able to relate to the gospel. And if a person is not able to relate to the gospel, it's not because they have a low IQ or low intelligence. But it has something to do with the heart. It has something to do with the heart. So now I want to encourage you... Uh, given the fact that the gospel is meant for men. I want to encourage you with one scripture that is going to give you a bit of insight into uh, why we must rely on Jesus Christ, why we must be born again, why we must accept the gospel. Remember Jesus' message was, repent and believe in the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, I'll read to you from the New King James 
version. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. I'll read that again. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. I like how the King James puts it. It says, miserable. So, if our hope in Jesus Christ is in this life only, then we are of all men, miserable, pitiable. We must be the ones that the rest of the world is pitying because our hope in Christ is in this life only. How many of you will agree with me that a lot of Christians today are struggling with so many things that have to do with the quality of their lives? They may be thriving spiritually, <laughs> but many of them are not able to afford uh, what we would describe as a comfortable life. And so Christianity has not been sold to men on the basis of, uh, at least many, many people do not take Christianity as that one uh, message that is going to transform their lives here, but they think of it as a message that is going to transform their lives in heaven. So they have this postponement of the benefits of the gospel with which they take the message of the gospel, which has built a general misconception around this message of the gospel throughout the world. Now, when I say throughout the world, I don't mean every single person. Of course, we have uh, a good amount of Christians on the earth, even though we are not the majority. And we have a good amount of Christians who have understood the gospel for what it is. But the point is this, we must not take away from the gospel the benefits that it will give us in this life. Neither should we think of the gospel as it only being beneficial for us in this life. However, we must not take away from the gospel the benefits that it will give us in another life. Notwithstanding, this does not mean that because the benefits of the gospel will come in another life, then we cannot benefit from the gospel in this life. So what Paul is saying here is he's distinguishing lives. He says, if our hope in Christ is in this life alone, then we are miserable because he understands how that some had to die poor in this life. Some had to be persecuted and killed for the sake of the gospel in this life. If then their hope in Jesus Christ ended there, if our hope in Christ, having abstained from certain things in this world, our hope in Christ ends here. And when we die, we are dead. We're gone. We're non-existent. Then we are the most pitiable of all men because we gave our lives up. We gave our lives away. We mortified our bodies for the sake of Christ. Yet our hope in him was in this life only. One day, you wake up like every other day. One day you wake up like every other day, whether you're going to school, you're going for work, you're going to church, you're going to see your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever it is, you're going to see whatever you're going to do. One day you wake up like every normal day. Not knowing that your soul has been summoned in another world. Someone has called upon your soul and it's time for you to pack your bags and go. You know, death is a process. We're dying every single day. Every single day we're dying. Something is dying about us, ourselves. If you, if you, if you study carefully, you will learn that the majority of the dust that's under your bed is your skin. Because your skin is dying every day. Your body is dying every day. And when someone eventually dies and crosses over from this life into another one, the process of death has finally been completed. So one day you wake up like every other day, not knowing that day the process of your death will be fulfilled. And within a couple of seconds, it will be like you have simply gone to bed at night. You just closed your eyes and your eyes were opened in a dream. And you were not able to tell 
that I had just gone to sleep. I'm now dreaming. Not too many people are able to distinguish that they had just gone to sleep and they are now dreaming. So when they, when they close their eyes, having gone to sleep, and their eyes open up in their dreams and they begin to see, they cannot distinguish that, oh, I had just, I had just gone. It's like you've been living in your dream. In the world, in your dreams, it's like you've always been there. So you are not wondering, where did I come from? How did I find myself here? I was in, 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 uh, I was in Zimbabwe or I was in, in, in Canada. You never really wonder. Well, some do. But imagine one day you wake up like every other day and you're doing everything you're, you're planned to do. And that day you make a transition from this world into the next into a different life where you will wake up and the realization might not hit you immediately that you have taken off your jacket, your body, and you are now living in a spirit world. The difference between this life and that life <laughs> may not be as big as you think in terms of how aware you will be. Remember the rich man and Lazarus, I always refer to the scripture, Luke 16. They were very conscious of the lives they lived on earth to the extent that they said, send someone from the dead. The rich man said, send someone from the dead that he may go and preach to my brothers that they don't come here as well. And Abraham said, no, they have the prophets there. So imagine, imagine that. One day you wake up, you transition. Now, at this point of transition, this is where death is employed to come and help you complete the process of transitioning from this life into another life. And so death uses whatever, whatever means, whatever mechanisms, because this is, if you are a believer, you're born again, this is the last time you're going to be interacting with death. The very last time you're going to be interacting with death. You see, the reason why believers still have to die is because the Bible in the book of Corinthians tells us about how this body has to be sown into the ground like a seed and will, what we will reap is the new body. Sown in weakness, raised in power. But we never really die. Jesus says, for all are living unto God. For he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. So when you exit this life and death comes to assist you to enter into the next one, and suddenly every doubt you ever had, even the argument you may have in your heart now about what I'm saying, the day you go into the other life, then you realize, I have come to a place I once denied was there. I have come to a place I once denied was there. And suddenly you realize that things work differently from the world you're coming from. <laughs> and now you have to give account. And now you have to say, oh, this day I spoke this word. It's because of this. What I'm trying to tell you is there is a day that is coming where you're going to get into a more permanent life than the one we know. Because even the day that Jesus comes to raise us back to life, we're not going to be living this life. Why must you believe in Jesus? Because life doesn't end here. This is not the only life we're living. Even Jesus himself, having come to earth, the Bible says the word became flesh. It means before he lived the life he was living here, the 33 years he lived here, there was another life he experienced. And in the same way, there's another life we experience. And so we must believe in Jesus because he is the door into everlasting life. Once we have exited this world where we have built kingdoms, systems of protection, some are so heavily defended in this world, nothing can touch them. But we're going into a world where the quality of your life here determines who you will be in that world. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to encourage you to accept 
and believe in Jesus Christ now while he can be found. Because no one knows either when you will transition from this life into the next or when the Lord will come. Therefore, I would like to encourage you, if you have not received Jesus, please take this opportunity to receive him and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I accept I'm a sinner. I accept I have deviated from your way. I realize my need for salvation. Your arms are open. Therefore, I come to you. I repent of all my sins. I turn my back on my old ways. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Wash me. Clean me. Secure me in this life and in the life to come. I acknowledge you as the one the Father sent. You were born in the flesh. You died. And on the third day you were raised. You were taken up into heaven. And one day you will return. I believe in your Lordship. And I acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Congratulations, child of God. You are now born again. And if today you transitioned into another life, trust me, you will be meeting the man in charge and you will thank me. All right. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.